Uh, did you guys work on the E and M homework last night? I like started it later, and I was just like, "Oh, that's tough." What are the questions we ask? So one thing that we teach you, you know, I taught you that log of determinants is trace of log. You know, what do you care? Why do you care about determinant? So determinants happen all the time for the following reason. To solve problems in physics, we need good coordinates. So for example, if I'm running on a circle, I can do this in Cartesian coordinates. It's possible, but it's tedious. If I take radial coordinates, then it's trivial. You know, radius constant, and I move with constant velocity. So almost any problem that we solve uses the symmetry of the problem to choose sensible coordinates. And then we change our laws, which are natural written, let's say, in Cartesian coordinates. So we go from an integral that looks like delta x1, delta x2, delta x3, and uh, in three dimensions and any number dimensions is OK. And what we are doing is we are looking at a little volume. That's what this is. There's a little hypercube. Now we choose new coordinates. Let's call them y. So every original point in the original state space in d dimensions vector x, and the simplest version of these new coordinates, we decide that you know this guy is too long, this one is too short, let me rescale them. And, uh, you know, maybe it makes more sense to turn it around. You'll see when we uh, study eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So we multiply by some matrix, which I will call uh, J uh, for Jacobi, or in English, Jacobian, a German mathematician, who studied the change of coordinates. And now what happens is if we change coordinates, then uh, we can construct a matrix of ratios, you know, so these small volumes and eventually we take them in infinitesimal. So there is this matrix of the original coordinates. And what this thing describes is that in every original direction of hypercube, now I've gone into a, a parallelopiped. This is a volume. We're integrating over volumes. So the new volume is volume. This volume happens so often uh, in all of engineering and science that it has a name. It's called determinant of J. And because volumes are positive, there is an absolute sign. But main thing is that we have to compute these volumes. And we have to do it in general relativity or in control problems in robotics or any place where we have to change coordinate systems. And we change them locally. So that covers all nonlinear problems, even though I'm teaching you linear methods right now. What's uh, determinant and why is it the volume? So there's a real clear geometrical picture. Next thing I want to explain is my intuition why determinant of a matrix is the volume of the parallel pipette in any dimension. So the intuition is, you know, it's very simple, but for some reason I don't see it on the internet. Look, let's look at the area of a parallel, parallelogram, which is volume in two dimensions. You give me two vectors, vector A and vector B, and you ask, what's the area of the parallelogram that I span? 
Well, you know, that, that's pretty obvious. A has two components, A1 along X direction, A2 along two direction, that's zero. This guy has two components, B2 is along the Y direction. Now, what I can do is, you know, I can uh, cut out this triangle and just stick it in there, or I can just deform the whole thing, so slide it. I'll use the word volume in any dimension. A1 times B2. Now, we have, in principle, two vectors, four numbers, and everything we multiply of these components has a dimension of volume, right? So you could imagine that result depended on A1, B1, a1, B2, A2, B1, A2, B2. In this particular case, A2 is zero because it's a horizontal vector, so, you know. And it turns out that B2 doesn't matter because we can just move in that direction, nothing happens. So, you know, A1, B1, forget it. Now, you know, I can do the same thing in vertical direction. So, I look at this area. Now I can slide this way. And I get the thing. And it turns out, you know, now A2 was known zero, but still this thing did not matter. So of all possible combinations, you know, uh, we don't get it. And now you do the same thing for a general pair of vectors. This is A. Now this is B. This is A. And now what you do is, you know, you you go along this axis, you slide it, you say, oh, it's like that, and then you slide it. And it's like that. And now, you know, the answer has to depend on more stuff uh, because, you know, the projection of this guy wasn't just A1, B2. You work it out and you get A2, B1. So what you get is an anti-symmetric combination of the vector components a, I, B, J minus has a property that if I um, look at, you know, A1, B1 minus A1, uh, one interchanging the two indices, I get zero. So everything that's pointing in the same direction goes out and uh, you need an anti-symmetric combination. Uh, this now goes in all dimensions. So in three dimensions, parallelepiped is defined by three vectors, which are the edges of parallelepiped. And you find out that you have to look at all components anti-symmetrized in all possible ways. So there'll be six of these components. And, you know, that's called a determinant. So that was understood very well in the beginning of 20th century by Cartan. It's, it's very essential in doing subjects like robotics or like general relativity. You could not do general relativity of classical problems without understanding determinants. And it is just because the volume is a very essential property of space it's preserved by many symmetries, and that's why we care.